probably their best chance to be able to pull out a first map and uh, a hard veto no matter how you toss it. But they know the best of five is coming. Kerrigan's been waiting for a moment like this his whole career. BMAS opening kill. Glaive answers back. And now they try to score a plant, but the bomb is going back through the brown halls, thinking about maybe getting into B, and BMAS will continue his rampage outside. It's actually huge he gets this kill. Eventually he'll get traded, but it opens lines into the B site for a plant. Step back. Gonna jump up, try to challenge Kerrigan in their faces, up in the grills of this Z train. He's taken back to 44 HP. Still stands though. He's doing a very good job of just posturing so that the defense can't quite best him. But all the while, Dupree now slipping down the ramp. He sees what he needs. Rop's gonna get executed. That flank is fantastic from Astralis, and it's a CT sided pistol win for the Danes. Dupree's playing some of his best CS at this event, looking very smart, looking very sharp. Um, along with everybody else on the roster, Magisk's come to form is not a coincidence when you talk about Glaive coming back on as an IGL. And that is also another scary thing about Astralis. It just feels like individuals, they go unnoticed a bit because the team aspect is so heightened, but the individuals are showing up in spades. Mouse Sports do not win the round. They get a plant and they'll just turn this into a deco, potentially looking for another one, but you can never write out a team here on a deco these days. Always a chance. Especially Mouse Sports. They've got the firepower for it. Strong Deagle players. Frozen in BMAS. Big time in BMAS. Kerrigan gets wrecked. I'm very curious to, as the gun rounds get going, keeping an eye on Kerrigan. Uh, it was versus Heroic last week that I think Kerrigan's new playstyle and his new success was very much apparent. Constantly getting out from T-Con, challenging Olaf, walking through smokes, you know, and, and we were sat there questioning whether it was just a matter of chance or if it's a hard read, um, you know, but definitely taking early gambles. And if he's going to get shut down, by the big brains of Astralis, then I think most suddenly do need that extra level from their fragging pieces. Obviously, the Desert Eagles have been smoked off this round, so they never even had that long distance range of engagement, never had a chance to rattle the heads of Astralis, who have so far, so far minimized all threats. It's been very clear that Glaive has, and you know, Zonic and whoever else is helping them prepare has gone off of what they have seen in this tournament from the other teams. I mean, for Furia, it was watching whatever demos they could find, but they have specifically attacked what appeared to be the problem for their opponents. And as you're referencing versus Heroic, Borup dying constantly in the sandwich as Kerrigan would just walk out of Tikon over and over again. We're going to look for that on this CT side for something that they're going to try to attack. Rosen's got two to his name. He loses all his teammates and device. Uh-oh. It finishes a round with a pistol headshot. Oh don't, 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 don't get me started on this again, man. <laughs> After yesterday, 4-0 for oh device, a couple of USP headshots for a couple, uh, for 600 bucks in the bank buy up here for Mouse Sports, and now we'll see. I did have, I, I, I was a bit, at that time when Kerrigan was doing this versus Heroic, I was, uh... I was a bit pessimistic about, you know, you know where that was coming from, whether it was some luck involved. It felt like Borup was looking for it sometimes, but he was getting caught off. So this will be the real test. This will be the real test of the T side to see if, if Kerrigan can pull that off again. True that. Double frag grenade. Kerrigan losing 40 health to those. See, they're looking for him. Those deep grenades right in front of the smoke early on. Yeah. In the previous round as well, we had Glaive get aggressive and just pummel him through the smoke with some shots. He's sweating. So we'll have to keep our eyes on Astralis and the T-Con posturing, the pressuring, the pestering. More utility damage, which has just been, of course, a key feature of Astralis' CT side on what feels like every single map nowadays. You know, it all really began on Inferno. That's when everyone needed to learn how to use grenades to even keep up. But that has leaked over into the entire pool. Dupree peeks in, sees nothing for the time being. 50 seconds on the clock and Rops, well, he's going to Molotov him out as Magisk mollies into the T-Con, pushing Mouse Sports back. Yeah, they're forcing here. Mouse Sports do not want to make a decision just yet, but they've got Bomb outside T-Con, and they're pressing up for a split here outside, but they don't have T-Con control, and Frozen gets caught off guard. They are about to get melted down. Yeah, gap in that smoke. He saw the ankles. Rops sees the eyes of Dupree. Magisk, nice commitment on the position, and BMAS... We'll at least be able to trade that one. We've got two pieces of Mouse Sports 3 incredibly low. 
Just a dozen health on two. Chris J is able to come out from Ivy, but it's Device's scope that is firing off first and foremost. Rops knows he needs to concede, so a slow round for Mouse Sports where they were able to dodge Astralis out the gate. And we get a couple of kills each way, and it fizzles out at the very end, right when Mouse Sports were on the cusp of finally committing. Like waves crashing on a shore, they kept applying pressure into the T-Con first with their smoke and triple nade into Kerrigan to the late T-Con control to the Molotov to follow. They sussed out the split before they knew it was coming. Mouseports knew they got red in this round, but they didn't have an answer back to stop it. You have to be able to apply pressure in a number of ways constantly to mask your game plan. And right now, Astralis had it way too comfortable on the A site. Single AK for Rops. See if he can go god mode. You made this analogy yesterday, this comparison between simple and electronic to Rops and Frozen. And I think it reigns true in saying that, you know, Rops, he turned heads because of his story and his route to the top. Frozen took it with him. It just so, at times, I would say still underrated. People don't realize Frozen is the real deal. Is Rops the offer in my analogy? No. But just in the uh, the pathing that they took, you know, it's it's hard to be a star when there's already such a bright ray of hope. Rops, well, he's dead. Glaive doubling down onto B-Mast. And Device, well, he's gonna find himself another. It's just frozen two kills on the round. Flashbang goes over. Frozen, very little to lose here. It seems like Mouse Sports have already conceded the round, but 20 health, two Deagle headshots is all he needs, and of course Frozen finds the first one. You need to fear this man. Oh, if he had the bomb, we could talk. We'll see how this gets played, but Device can play around this. And again, Device has been putting up the clutches, very common, the 1v1s. Frozen gonna look for this kill. He knows he was last spotted Ivy. Where he goes is the question. Sitting Hell might be a least expected option, but look at the way that Frozen's approaching the site. He might come in and clear this. Oh, yeah. Just a good, good spot for Device. He wins the 1v1. He's 8-0 and zero in four rounds, and he's making it look easy once again. The kills are good. It comes down to a 1v1, but they don't win the round, and Astral still have money to buy. Let's see what you got, Mouse Sports. Last rifle round, completely outclassed. Still a lot of options left here on train, though. I think the fact that they made so many waves in that last round could bode well for Mouse Sports. They were working with a little and they obtained a lot, but Device, unstoppable for the time being. Chris J's posted on this. I don't think Chris J can afford as many missed shots as he had versus Godsend. I don't think anybody can afford to be off their game in this BO5. Not if Mouse Sports truly want to contest it. Device, he's going to get Chris slipping right into the scope, and then he dives down into the B site. Falls back in a very comfortable five versus three. It's Magisk and Device with the first two kills. Kerrigan dies coming out of Tikon out towards Olaf. So that's a, a big kill again. Again, a lot of Mel Sports' T side was based around these pushes. And Chris J jumps over the railing because his teammate dies. That's why they speed the round up a little bit. So it just allows Astralis to get one kill followed by a second one very easily. Ladder control is something I expect Mouse Sports to be pretty good at taking on T side and CT side. This got strong pieces here. Rops is usually the one lurking, holding the inner flank, working ladder. On the CT side, we've got Frozen to come through. Both, again, very consistent features of this team at the moment. Got Device back at the depths of the B site. Zipix, oh, nice God. and personally close in their faces, ready to go as the smokes shower through. He puts the incendiary down. That's going to move Frozen right into the crosshair. Tries to get it with the spray. But that upper smoke almost gave Vmas what he needed to get one kill and alleviate the front runner from Astralis. But Vmas drops down into Zipix, who does die at the hands of Frozen. But because Vmas is no longer up high, Device certainly is. He is 10 and 0. Five rounds oh. deep. Let's see, Rob. One versus four with the sniper rifle trying to catch a shoulder at a distance and he hits it, but he doesn't have enough time to get that off back on cycle. Rops showing promise. Mouse sports finding openings, but Astralis taking every single round so far. Yeah, they're finding these. They're at least getting into the round at some point, but like a bomb plant 
is cool. They just don't have control. It doesn't look like they're ever going to win, and it definitely isn't true. It doesn't seem like they 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 have actually given themselves good odds out of the out of the start of the round. But we have another buy back to back. And I swear, you know, Rob's, he's a better play, player than Chris, but he's not going to necessarily be a better opera all the time. Personality-wise, he just would not be able to take over a round every single time. Um, so they have to rely on Chris to do well. Glaive will get in their face, shutting down Kerrigan and his teammate VMAS looking to trade. Outer Exec is getting stopped in its tracks. Rob's able to trade, and he gets Magisk. Quick kill, but taken oh. off of the train. It's all on Chris J. Whoa. He was crouched. That was through the train. Yeah, device. Starting off this series exactly where he ended versus Furia. On top and on point. But Chris J is on site. And he does have the bomb. Device just going to stay tucked inside of Z. Chris, he's been spotted. And he will find one kill. But that activates Device, who is 12 and 0. Yeah, he's... <laughs> At the tournament. A lot of strong, a lot of strong, uh, yes, yeah, a lot of strong rosters in these four v five situations. But of course, no one's hit more records in terms of statistics over Astralis, and they're definitely in game reform at the moment. So Glaive takes an aggressive option outside of Ivy. Now they don't need to necessarily push through Tcon. Frozen. We'll see if he comes and clears this. He seems like he's being very careful about it, and that's an opening kill. Glaive does not get a shot off. M4 picked up as well, but he is still very much alone on Ivy. With that kill up in the upper halls, check out this little movement. Device, he's fallen all the way onto the opposite side of the map, and, well, it's where their teammate dies that two Ts decide to get a little more adventurous. They're trying to peek into the B site using Chris J's scout. He's been spotted. Mm-hmm. Zipex over towards the oil tankard. We've got a little movement from Dupree inside of Pop Dog. Smoke comes out from Z, but this is a bomb plant out of Mouse Sports, just slipping through, using a corpse for cover. Chris J flashes deep as we have Astralis scrambling into the beast. Box stalls firing back and unable to catch anything with his sidearm. Device, three kills on the round again. And Frozen, how does he even get his head into this play? How does he get his head into this game when you have everyone from Astralis popping off at this moment? I am talking 15 kills, zero deaths, 7-0 lead. Device is taking over. And again, zero hard shots. When I'm casting Device, I, I, he will always get his praise. This is something insane from him, and we've seen nothing but... Lame highlights, all tournament, because of how easy he's made the game look. That's the beauty of Device. So damn good, he makes it look easy. Frozen, quick trade frag. There's been a couple of famous maps where <laughs> Magisk has picked up the op on train. Kind of like comes in like Rops, like, oh, what the hell? He's actually an amazing opper. Uh, so far, now it looks like the pace is being turned up a bit. Mouseport's getting melted down again. Their map pick, 7-0 and zero start. My god, Astralis, hard to overcome. That initial meticulous game plan got shut down by Mouseports. They tried to go back to the Kerrigan Lurks. That got shut down, absolutely. They do a faster exec, no games required. That gets shut down. And now Astralis, again, it's like, condition them to be scared of everything and now can start to take more egregious peaks when it comes to their pushes and that's working too. On top of one another within the ladder waiting for the fire to fade and well it's a good trade but of course it still loses them a body so we're gonna have to see it between BMAS and Frozen. They both still have utility. They've got 35 seconds to find footing on the A site with two CTs inside of Z they won't find anybody out in the open. They're still hoping. Device down deep on Ivy, scoped in. Could be a little bit of a, an op combat if Frozen looks over oh. onto Ivy, but first he sees the player in Z and then he slips right into the scope of Device. It is shut down. Astralis, eight rounds and no signs of stutters. Yeah. Let's let's set some records. 16-0 here for a device. 8-0 for Astralis. Another buy round for Mouse Boards as they are just teeming with loss bonus. Uh, they are doing some damage, actually. The money isn't amazing for Astralis, so if there's ever going to be a comeback, this is the best set of parameters to make that happen. 
Strauss to win one or two rifle rounds. The Strauss will have to save. Lost most be on Mouseport's side. It's just we don't see what the ideas can be to allow Mouseports to win a round. So far, they're getting out dueled and out game plan. Wave sees B-Mass slip out into Olaf. Robs is going to take damage. B-Mass trying to push through, and well, he does have Magis, get a bit of a pressured spot. Kerrigan finds the better of the timing through Ivy. And this is going to pull Device away from the B-Site, back around through CT spawn. B-Mass sees Glaive's hand. Now he's in a tricky position, and he's already down to half health, but Device, he finds it. Kerrigan. A little more occupied with the A site, but the bomb's gonna challenge down B ramp, and Zipex, well, he does not know this at all. By the time he peeks back out, he sees a player, but BMAS doing such a good job of serving up Frank here on the outer yard. He gets two kills to his name. Is this the first round Device is slain? Because he's 17 and 0 still. He's got two players straight ahead of him. Yeah, unluckily, unlikely that they pull this retake off, but here's a chance. Mouse sports, they really do want to get one over economically. So it might be a bit risk, risky to go for the push to get them in the exit. But I think they have an idea of where they might be. And there's a chance now that they could potentially punish. But they're starting to peel back the other way. Chris could be the one, the death dealer. We'll see what's written in his death note. Device there or not. Will he jump around the corner? Zipix isn't watching this flank. Oh, he doesn't move out. So the save comes in and Mouseworth win a clean round. So here they actually are able to create the chaos that they're looking for. They they get outside, B Mass stays alive, and of course they could they could still know. In terms of accolades, like if there's anything that can win that for an IGL, it's how how decorated you are, right? So that's just period when it comes to Astralis. Wave. Yeah. As many pins as General Anders. <laughs> Molotov's exchanged here towards T-Con Kerrigan. He's found a good bit of timing. is gonna be preoccupied, but he does find the double. And even Zipex kinda has his head turned, so sure enough, Kerrigan slips through smoke onto Ivy. Magisk never sees it coming. And Device, he still keeps fighting. 18 kills, zero deaths. And obviously, Astral is very much aware that the backside of the A site is open for the taking. Mouse Sports trying to get that bomb over oh. fast enough to maximize this moment. Because soon, the utility's burned out, and all of a sudden, Device is looking to get into this fight. He swapped over to the AK, and he wastes no time, oh! but he's down. Finally, somebody's killed this man. Chris J with the headshot. Zipex with the attempted flick cannot find what he needs. Kerrigan wasting zero seconds, running down Olaf, walking through that ivy smoke. Mm -hmm. It took distractions on the forefront for Astralis. We saw Zipex inside of Pop Dog, and we saw, I believe, Dupree over on the T-Con. Magisk was unaware that a player was so close, and the moment he dies, we find Mouse Sports with an outer sight hit. Now we're cooking a little bit. We got the jambalaya on this stove. Okay, they, they've got the spices in the pot. They're starting to smell them. We've got a situation where Astralis don't have the money. Mouseports have full loss bonus on their side. So it could be a, money, a round where they really stabilize their economy. This is where the comebacks were meant to happen. And Mouseports did a good job of doing damage throughout all of these rounds that they lost. So they put that coveted two in a row together. And now Astralis are a bit worried. So what's changed? Mouseports have upped the tempo a bit. And sometimes it's hard to read their T-side, but that's what's working so well for them. They go fast, they do not slow it down, where Astralis can really put their protocols in place, deny T-Con control or any of that. They just take it outside quickly and make a lot of space. You know, one of the features of Mouse Sports game versus Godsent yesterday was absolutely this ability to turn around the halves within halves. We saw them go down six rounds in a row to close on Mirage. The problem, of course, for most sports is that I think Astralis, unlike Godsent, are going to be able to adapt to their enemies' adaptations way faster. It's tough to get ahead of Astralis in the first place, let alone keep it fresh enough that they don't catch right back up. This pistol, or this round rather, with just pistols, a very strong statement from most sports. Five players still up, barely any utility even needed, and a third T round to the board. Yeah, this is... 
Definitely. And this is about the fact that Mouse Ports can put together a pretty, you know, reasonable half potentially with just the help of, you know, winning the two rounds in a row, the economy getting into a rough spot. Astral also buy down to zero again. So this would be easy, easiest path back. Even if we call Astral the better team in this half, the way that uh, Mouse Ports were able to manufacture a couple of rounds, if they can do that one more time, they'll have a very reasonable situation. Uh, where Astralis have pretty much already met their quota. So it looks like they're going to keep the tempo high again. I love this from Mouseports, but let's see if it works out. Oops. Oh my, oh my how god. Does he how that does he recover? Crazy, man. On top of it, Kerrigan, he's going to find a kill and double down on his own. Let's go. Kerrigan leading by example in these recent rounds, smashing himself against this A site hold. And it's not much of a hold in this one. Yeah, you kind of have oh. to stand you know, in awe of Kerrigan when it comes to figuring things out. He's proving it versus Astralis is the very last thing that they have to do at this event. He's proved it versus every single other opponent. This will absolutely be the final boss in more ways than one. His former team, the best team of all time, a team coming back to form, the team that got knocked down to the lower bracket they avoided this entire time, uh, and the team that has smashed through every single thing that has been thrown down, as you drew the analogy, you know, the alligators in the moat. And yes, they just turn the tempo way up. They catch Glaive off guard. Robs hits this insane like. It's like he's playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater or something. Jumped off his skateboard, turned around. Mr. Cool. Pistols again. Yeah, a little bit bigger this time. A few deagles at least in the mix. Kerrigan, such fluidity when it comes to pushing down Olaf. He sees an easy headshot, not gonna let that one slip by. And Glaive dies too at the hands of Frozen. So Mouseports finding solutions on this outer yard. And nobody other than Device is really stepping up to his level. Yeah, he's just mad his team is causing him to lose his KD. Frozen will take his cap. Zipix starts to move into play. Looking for the long range Deeg doesn't come. And it's already a very reasonable scoreline now. They're a horrible start here from Mouseports. Confidence will start to build back up. They can maybe believe in the game plan a little bit more. Now it comes down to what do Mouseports want to do? There's still the potential for fast inner hits and looking for aggressive openings if they think Astralis are going to try to push down Ivy or push up uh, inside uh, inner halls. Uh, I think the slow outside's probably got to be out at this point, but uh, it, it feels like Astralis have not answered when it comes to the rushes. Very smooth bounce back from most sports. It was looking like we were going to have a one-sided affair here on train. We've got two rounds left to play in this half. Very, very impressive stuff. Chris J just going to keep the pop dog ladder honest. They're, so, they're throwing some grenades. I, I imagine... You know, if I'm Glaive, I'm thinking this uh, This is probably going to be an inner hit because they know that the slow sides have failed badly. So look look at Astralis rotating already. They It's outer presence, but they took T-Con control. They've got three inner now. Kerrigan slips through, but Glaive's ready for that one. Good damage comes back. He's now on 13 health. Takes to the top of the train yard. Device finds BMAS and doubles down onto Rob. Zipex slips into the site, frozen all that's left over. So Mouseports trying to change it up. Spreading across the map into a very even default, looking to lock in on the B site, but they get nothing. Right back to their winning ways, Astralis, here in the 14th round. They shut it down, one kill from Device through smoke. That was a big read, but I think at the same time, it was a little bit, almost. I don't want to say obvious, but, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense that this would be the time to kind of fake out map control and move into another exec. So late round frozen has always been something fun to watch, but Astralis win a ninth. And again, they're there just in time. They read the situation perfectly. Mouseports will call attack, and this is the most spicy round of all, right? They just got called out trying to go for some kind of fake after getting a couple of really good fast rounds outside. And then now, so you're saying uh, that's in the sports buff buff question. He is the answer. Probably, yeah. <laughs> well, Another fast one. Maybe especially after this. Yes, they go for the fast one. I, I personally like it. We have right back to what we're yet, but the flash is perfect to Olaf. So blind. 
so incredibly blind. Oh, they actually don't go for the exec behind it. Interesting. Here it comes, though. More utility over the top. Smoke over towards Z. We've got CTs within the site itself. Magic's gonna be dropped by VMAS. And then there's Device. Comes crawling through the smoke with vengeance. Oh, Chris that's... J. That could have been the shot to take it back into the 3v3, but instead both offers stand for Astralis, and we're going to watch Mouse Sports in a final attempt on this T side scramble over to the B side. There is definitely a chance that they get here fast enough, but you can see Astralis sussing out the situation. Zipex already in the station that he needs to be in. But Glaive, he's a little scoped in. Oh, Chris J saw him as he crossed, thought he was going to be able to catch him, and instead it's all on Frozen. A one versus four to close the T side from Mouse Sports that looked like it was never going to deliver. Five rounds, certainly enough. When you consider that the last time these teams met on the two maps that Astralis beat them, it was the T sides where Mouse Sports struggled. They could not get through the rock solid defense of Astralis. And even though it's only absolute grand finals form from device to start on the CT side, he finished that half 22 and four. But now Mouse Sports, this is their first map pick of a best of five grand finals. They knew they were gonna be tested today. Kerrigan talking about the support he now has with Mither. Let's see what the game plan is. Let's see who can stop Astralis. Because at the time being throughout this event, Nobody seems to have been able to do it other than Godsend. I think as good as BMAS is, one of his biggest follies on the CT side is playing the same spot too many times. This is his favorite position to play at Ivy up against this wall. You watch one demo and you'll know about that. So it looks like Astralis wants to attack this just for a second and it actually causes the push inner. They squeeze out. It's not every day Rops will make a mistake in that situation, but it was all part of the plan here for Astralis. 5v4 and uh, Mouse Sports, they seem frozen in place. They've got some good info, at least from Frozen here outside uh, at the, um, in the box halls. The Molotov double smoke. Where do those nades go? Time to find out. One deep on IV, one on Z. This is going to isolate Kerrigan and Chris J inside of the bomb site. Device finds the better of the timing, and it is headshot for Astralis. Device making it look way too easy to take over that outer site, so Astralis T side start looks good. They prime themselves, you get the 5v4, then they just go for the entry. So, like, what's the weaker site going to be? They just make a judgment call, right? It's not based on complete information, but they have to just come through and hit their shots, and they do. Frozen doesn't get caught off. Always good for one when his team dies, but uh, not much else for him to do except for save. So he'll walk away with this one half armor for Frozen. And uh, strong round from Astralis. Opening tactics, get a kill, moving into an exec. What more can you say about that? We're going to stay on device watch. What's he at, 23 and 4? Should be 24, I think. 24 and 4. Plus 20. At round 17. Double the amount of kills of the next highest fragger on Astralis. Right. Smacking the KD. Smacking everyone's KD. You know, the narrative Smacking the craft dinner right out of their hands. <laughs> the story of most sports was them bringing up their skill, skill floor. You know, Chris J, Kerrigan, BMAS, all starting to slot in, but I don't know if it's even going to matter if he keeps it at this device. Feeling like the absolute best player in the world. Bomb plant down on the B site. All too easy with that first rapid entry. Astralis wasting no time in this grand finals to let Mouse Sports get comfortable. Scout shot from Chris. Going to find something. But after that, it falls down on to BMAS. He has three players ahead of them. Or him. He needs to be more than one person. Yeah, sometimes he's like Ganesh, you know? He's all over the place. Three kills. He slows down time. Bends ammo. Brings the bullet to them. Seven round lead for Astralis as the bomb pops. Terrorists win. 
Mouse Sports, they need to stabilize on the defense as fast as possible or else this train game is going to leave them with such a small margin of error. Only Astralis could come back in a train game in a grand final with this scoreline. Another round with barely anything for Mouse, of course. A couple frag grenades, a couple of Desert Eagles. Good thing B-Mass survived. That does put the scout back in the hands of Chris. Let's see it. Oh, he just peeks into Dupree. It was just tapping off a couple shots. But that's a big 5v4. Kerrigan now with the task at hand. He finds himself a little bit of damage. That's Dupree to disengage. But obviously Astralis, they can take all the time they want to squeeze this lemon. I like to take a bite of a lemon every once in a while. Makes you feel alive. Mm. Drops. He's going to feel alive, but he's actually dead. Falls into the crosshair of Zipex and Frozen. Let's see it. The third player on the scout for Mouse. Still only Magisk to have hit the dirt from Astralis. Frozen kind of relegated to the no man's land. Beamass, he's going to draw attention. That's perfect. That's exactly what they needed, but they need a little bit more. And it's not going to come. Dupree, he shows no mercy. Executes Frozen, puts Astralis on their 13th round. And of course, Mouse Sports, now is their chance to buy. Mouse Sports, we're playing CSGO. Dupree was playing Dishonored. 13 to 5. And we'll finally get a buy. So whatever happened before this, just a result of the pistol. Now we'll see. Okay, Mouse Sports, stop. The train before it departs the station. Here is an opening kill from Frozen. Again, Frozen at ladder. It's a, it's a brave duel to take. It's actually Dupree to come out of T-Con. Frozen fights him sideways. He is sitting in this spot. Glaive wants to make sure he gets out of here. Let's see what they do off of this, though. It's a single Molotov to push him backwards. They get the idea is here, but they're going to go for the double drop. However, that smoke means they cannot drop into it safely. On the protocols coming into place. All the while, Mouse Sports haven't pushed anything quite yet. And we get that next Molotov to come through, and Frozen doesn't have two smokes. Knowing this, he'll have to leave. Double drop will be successful, and that's how you win ladder. I see it completely clear. Two CTs just outside of it, though. Definitely a chance Mouse Sports could re engage into ladder room and maybe rotate a third piece into this B site before the commitment comes in. Chris J passive angle, Astralis execute, starts to be thrown out, Rock, he's not gonna find himself a kill. It's tons of damage versus Glaive, but not the frag they needed. Chris to the top of the train, can't manage a second, even though he jumps right back down into the action. Kerrigan, that could be the frag that starts to turn the tables, but Mouse Sports losing another player. It's just trade frag after trade frag, and it's gonna leave Zipex up close on site. Magisk back behind him. Flash goes out. Zipex peeks, it's perfect, but Beamass, well, he's able to deliver the kill. Magisk gonna find himself into the one versus one. Kerrigan's the reason this retake got rolling, but Magisk has three kills he, on the round already. Is he on it? No. He buys oh, the time, oh. waits him out. Peak from Magisk, shut down in Mouse Sports. They'll find a six. Okay, wow, they barely grabbed that. That's a close call. Oh my god, actually, do they have it? <gasps> oh! Oh. Less than a second left for the defuse. Kerrigan, he played it with everything he could. Damn, you have to give credit to Magisk for the late peak, right? You just, that, I mean, you feel like he comes down there. Of so course. Perfectly timed. If a kit is in play, then we're talking, but uh, Kerrigan, he, yeah, he does his best to get Magisk out as soon as possible. I thought it was a UI bug that the the bomb wasn't taking, but he just didn't want to tap the bomb twice. Damn. Astralis win that way. Tough spot. But no matter for most ports, they buy again. Kerrigan, another Og dual one here. That's a nice opening, but it's answered back by a frag from Magisk. Four and four, always scary. CTs have been punished for pushing inner. So some of the necessary conditioning in place. And, you, well, Chris J will just get eviscerated by an op shot from device off the pallet.
Oof. Testy situation here for Mouse Sports. They're out in the open. They don't feel comfortable going for T-Con. They throw a nade in this direction, but they're not really close to it. They're just floating, really relying on a heroic outside hold. And Frozen will even start to walk towards inner. Uh, Strahl is just waiting in place. We'll feed into this fear even further with maybe a smoke and a flash here from Zipix. And the CTs, you better believe they're just going to sit and wait. They're happy to see this. BMAS, matter of timing, do not look away. Magus walks right into it. He is alone over on Ivy. Yep. But there's two players from Astralis coming out from Tcon, or rather just the one, Device. He's going to stick around, and as long as he has BMAS locked into this position, it's technically a 2v2 elsewhere. Device will not let off this angle. No reason. Only the big flank that could come in eventually. But he knows BMAS is still here. Ice in his veins. Memory of an elephant. Frozen, he's already been able to come up to the A site. That's going to find Dupree with his back turn. They were finally sending a second T over to deal with BMAS. He has been so patient in this position, and he's still waiting, which now waiting enables an additional flank from Rops. But Device gets the kill he needs, and Rops then finds his flank. It's a bomb tap. Zipex. Ooh, he oh. calls him out, just jiggle peeking the angle. Frozen, he's going to try to give chase, but that bomb's going to blow up. And Astralis, they will have 15 rounds. I thought BMAS was eventually going to crack under the pressure, but he waited and he waited, and it almost all worked out. If Robs is able to extend out from TCON without killing. No, but it's just a lot of that comes down to roll, I think. But the. Um, but yeah, I mean, Astralis are like, if you don't make a play. We do have time on our side once, once this bomb gets planted. Things must be feeling dire in the Mouse Sports camp. Device gonna find the damage through the smoke. VMAS walks onto the grenade. A booby trap with the utility. VMAS lucky to be alive, frozen not so lucky. Dead already. Device is 26 and 7. 20 rounds deep and still above 180 R. And Astralis, they're just going to squeeze Mouse Sports in this position. You can see Mouse trying to find the information. Scout shot snapped up from Chris. They're just so good. Every single place that wants to get poked into, there's somebody waiting for it. The vice is that guy now. Kerrigan comes out. Oh, just as he falls wow. back. I think Kerrigan gets spotted now. So unlucky timing both ways. But uh, yeah, Astralis have more players in place to deal with it. The device specifically leaves when Magus comes in, right? So here he is. Kerrigan hunted down and killed. We get Mouse Sports it. scrambling back onto the A site. This is it. A 16th round looking likely. Chris J going to try to pull out some heroics with that additional kill. It turns back at least Device, the heaviest hitter of Astralis in this first map of a BO5 that Mouse Sports were looking to start with a map win. Then, oh, Magisk! He just lines up two player as if you need to break Mouse Sports any more than you already have. He snatches it away, but Rops will not go down without a fight. Couple of kills in the one versus four. He's spotted and dealt.